Hello everybody. Um, I've been really looking forward to this day for some time because this is a very special occasion for me. I'm going to introduce you to the Gardner 8L3B. Now, I refer to this engine as the Gardner of Gardners. It really is. This engine exemplifies and personifies everything that's good about Gardner. Simplicity of design, uh, rock solid build quality, uh, very easy on fuel, very, very simple, simple engine. This engine produces 260 brake horsepower at 1300 RPM. You're talking about massive torque. Um, you're actually talking about 1097 foot pounds of torque at 850 RPM. This is a brute of an engine and it will drive a big propeller, which is what you want. The bigger the propeller you have, the better, because the slower it can turn, hence less cavitation and less uh, all sorts of hydraulic uh, uh, problems. There's no electronics on this engine except a very, very basic electronic control box here for the dual starter system, which I'll refer to later. There's no turbocharger, it's a naturally aspirated engine. Um, you've got the latching levers as you have on the 6LXB. The rack and cam box just works the same as the other gardeners. There's, there's no difference there. Now, um, like all the gardeners, as, as I pointed out to you before, uh, the engine is understressed. It's low revving. It doesn't get any hotter than 60, 65 degrees C. And as I said, the maximum RPM is 1300. I mean, modern diesel engines would be ticking over at 1300, never mind given maximum power. Typical overkill on Gardner, you've got two pressure gauges. Perhaps we get home in there, John, please. Two pressure gauges. Now, on this one, there's actually three, and I'll confess I'm not too sure what this one was for. Possibly for measuring the oil pressure on this oil pump down here, which is used for the, the changing gear. Um, <coughs> It has no lift pump, this engine has no lift pump, but where 8L3Bs, 8L3Bs are fitted with lift pumps, they fit two lift pumps, just to be sure to be sure. If one fails, the other one will take over. Now, because there's no lift pump on this engine, we've had to rig up this Heath Robinson uh, fuel supply system here, John, which you can show. Right? <clears throat> in a boat, in a real boat, you would have to have a day tank and pump the fuel up to that. The fuel is fed down to the, to the fuel filter in here simply by gravity. So that's one less thing to, to go wrong. <coughs> now, um, some of the really incredible features. Uh, these plates here, these in inspection plates, can be taken off and you can examine the big end shells in situ. Uh, the, <coughs> the heads can be lifted off and you can extract a piston right out with its liner. The whole thing can come out. So again, wonderful for, for maintenance and, and uh, looking after the engine. Um, now, this, this particular engine has a very interesting feature here, John, if you'll come in on that. I refer to these as telltales. Now, my understanding is that if these unions here are, are in any way loose, the diesel will leak here. And on a complete engine, it's drained off down through this pipe here and into a container. So at any point in time, you can take a look at that container and you know whether those unions are all tight. You'll see that one here look, has been replaced and it doesn't have a telltale on it. This engine is going to a customer of ours in America. And I may suggest to him that he takes off these telltales here and just welds that up because it's a... <clears throat> It's, a, it's not a commercial vessel that it's going into, so you may not want that. But the choice is here. Again, you'll see two thermometers, one here and one at the top. There's not just one, I think there's three thermostats up here. Three thermostats. So if one sticks, there's another two there to take over. Um, the dry fat and alternator comes off here. Maybe you can show that, John, just here. Sometimes they also 
come off the front. But on this particular engine, that's where they're coming off. There's a valve here. This valve here enables you to isolate the hydraulics on the gear change. I don't want to talk too much about the gearbox because um, this gearbox is the same as the 2UC gearbox and I've already discussed that in detail. But we've checked, you'll remember on the video that I showed you the 2UC, we've checked this arm and it's locking back and locking forward, no problem. Now, just briefly, the two starter system, John, if you can just show in here, <clears throat> you'll see there's two simple relays there. They're not complicated at all, and there's just a big isolation switch there, and then a button for starter. So it's all very, very simple. Um, as soon as you press that button, these two rel relays are energized, and the, both rotors will move forward at the same time and engage with the flywheel. And once they're in position, the main current is, is uh, turned on and off she goes. So, uh, nothing more to say on that. We proceed now and, uh, and start her up. But before we do that, I'll just go through a few points with you uh, before we would start up any gardener engine. Maybe you could just pause it here. Okay. So, um, I'm really sorry for the background noise here. I, I can't help it. Again, we've got a storm here and the doors are rattling. There's nothing I can do about it. You'll just have to cock your ear extra close to your PC. So, um, I'd just like to go through a few things here that we would do before starting an engine that we suspect has not been started in some time. Now, this one, we started her quite recently, so I'm cheating a bit here. The first thing we would do under normal circumstances is we'd pop off the rocket covers and make sure that all the valves are moving freely. Okay? The next thing we would do is we would turn the engine over somewhere or other. If we've got access to the flywheel, we simply turn the flywheel. We may, we may need to employ some sort of a big lever or something to do that. On this particular engine, uh, we can use this coupling here on the front. See what you turn off. She's turning fine. I know she's turning off okay because um, I've already turned her a few days ago. Now, once we've done that, I personally would strangle the engines which will not start. I would then hit the starter and see if she's turning over nice and happy that there's nothing, no major knocks or, or um, worrying sirens or anything like that. And that's it. Once you've done that, you're free to go. You can bleed the diesel here. Again, I've showed you that in other, other videos. You just simply uh, slacken this screw here, slacken that screw here, open up your fuel valve, let the fuel valve down until you get a good free flow of fuel here with no bubbles. You then operate these levers here, no more than, they're, they're quite difficult to, to pull down, but that's the way they should be. Whoops, have to unstrangle her. Right, you get, you get that feeling? No more than three squirts for each one of those levers. Um, the excess button is actually missing on this one here, but normally there's a button there at the, at the front of the injection pump which you can push up and that will let the rack go as far back as it can. Hit the button and she'll start. If she doesn't start within maximum, maximum 10 revolutions, stop. There's something wrong. She's not getting through it. Don't crank and crank and crank and crank and start. Okay, so having said that, um, we just... Okay, um, the trigger box is actually missing from this engine because it's, it's actually broken. It was broken whenever she came here, so that's why I was controlling the, the revs here. I can't run her for too long because there's no coolant inside her. Um, also, I don't want to have too much fumes in this in this uh, workshop. A very interesting feature is there's no head gaskets. Normally between the head and the block, you'd have a gasket here. There's no gaskets from these engines. All there is is on the liner, there are O-rings. And if those O-rings ever leak, the coolant will show itself 
through a small hole on the far side of the block there. So you'll get warning that there's something wrong and that can be addressed. The whole liner, as I said, will pop out really quite easily and they're very easy to, uh, they're very easy to replace. So another score for Gardner. It's a general tour of the engine uh, to give you some idea of the size of it. You can see how massive the gearbox is here. The whole um, engine and gearbox weighs about four ton. Uh, these air inlets here are really quite clever. They suck air up from underneath the engine and hence help the bilge to stay dry. You'll see how big the water pump is there. That we're not in our own workshop here. Uh, we're in a workshop of a business called AIC. Uh, these people make incinerating uh, machines. Uh, widely used here in agriculture, but they're also used in the marine industry on fish farms, in big boats, where they can uh, they can take in whatever waste that is being produced and they can they can process and render it down. And they can also extract the energy uh, from that waste and use it to, to uh, heat radiators or have hot showers or whatever you want. Now, this is a local family business here. I'll give you a link to it at the end of this, the very end of this video, I'll put up a link to it. Um, <clears throat> I'm very happy with these, what these guys are doing here. It really is an, an environmentally uh, responsible thing to do what they're doing here. They really are doing a super job. This is a local family business. Uh, this is rural Ireland you're talking about here. So my family have known these people for generations. And I can, I can swear by them. These are, these are good people. These are solid people and they know what they're at. These guys are, are, are highly wired up technically. They really know their names. So if you've got, um, that's a blatant plug for them. Of course. Um, if you're thinking at all of any incineration equipment in any industry, but particularly in the marine industry, uh, you can give them a shout. I'd be delighted to hear from you. So that's all I have for you for the LTB now. I will show you at the very end uh, a photograph of her going off. But this engine is going to our customer in America, and she's going into a, a big, a big boat there. So I know he's not going to have any problems with this engine. This is this is a good, good solid engine. Thank you for joining us.